the smooth side. The pencil that I like uh, is a 6B, which is very, very soft and makes a very dark line, as you can see. Uh, there are other pencils that when I want to do fine drawing and it's just very intimate between me and the pencil, which is, this is a 6B that I just showed you. I would go to a 2B or a B. Both of these are excellent pencils and I spend most of my time using one of those two. The eraser that I've been using is an amazing eraser. It's called a kneaded eraser because it changes shape and it moves and the graphite goes into it. Now, if I wanted to erase with this, crumbs don't get on your drawing. You just simply rub like this and it disappears, except in the case of a 6B. So use a, use a kneaded eraser and use one of these three types of pencils and a great piece of paper. Don't draw too small and stay very loose and rough. Drawing takes practice, but remember to please yourself and the more you draw over and over, the better you'll get. I'd like to show you how to draw Anastasia. Come a little closer. I usually start the head construction with just a simple circle. And then I divide the circle into two halves like that. Then in half horizontally. This gives me what I call the eye line. I can put another kind of an oval-like shape or an almond shape for the eyes. Then I like to describe the cheek, the chin, and the jaw. So if you can draw that much, that's easy. On this eye line right over here, the ear is going to be placed right there. So we know where the ears are in Anastasia. Right in here in the center of this line is where the nose will be placed. Sketch this, but now I'm going to draw it just with a little more commitment to the line. I'm going to decide that the eyes should be a little larger here. And what I'm going to do is now draw her looking, and I'm going to have her look in this direction over here. Now, since this is a girl, I know that part of what girls like to do is put on a little bit of makeup so they have the lashes here. So this makes her look kind of, kind of a sexy look. And I keep finding some things as I go. There's her eye. Now the eyebrows are easy. They, the, this brow on this side will come up out of this line and curve over the top of the eye line. This will do the same thing so it's kind of symmetrical here over the top of that line. Her brows are a little thicker than just a pencil width. So I like to thicken them up a bit. Now, <clears throat> the most exciting part really is the mouth. And it's no good to just make her place the mouth. I'd like to make her smile just a little bit. So I'll try something like this. That kind of works This is a me. little tricky. Let's, I wanna get the, the neck on first though. There's the neck. This will be a shoulder. This will be a shoulder. Now you define those. And now the jaw. I know where to put that. Right in there. All right, the other side of her head. Right here. Now she hasn't had a haircut. It's kind of a, a do that she's got going here. So I'm making it a little short like that. And up in here, I don't know why we did this when we designed her. But we. this is not cloth. This is also hair. And out of the top of this hair comes this ponytail, which can be as scruffy as you'd like to make it. The reason we did this, of course, is because it gives her, gives her kind of a street look, like she's been not really able to take care of her. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of shading underneath this hair, because that'll help the head go back underneath there. Let's put, let's put the clothes on her now. She has a little collar here, and this is almost like this is almost like a cylinder, and her, heck, her neck comes up out of that. So it's something like that. But I'm going to draw it with a little more flair, and I'm going to make it loose on her. Now, the reason we chose to make loose clothes on, on Anastasia is because she probably hasn't had a store-bought dress her whole life long that she can remember. So the sleeves are too big, and if her shoulder's there and her other shoulder's here, it means that the seam for the sleeves is probably down there instead of up there. So it makes her look like the clothes are way too big. Uh, the way this, this Russian dress works is this part of the dress flaps over here and there's a button right there. And then this is the bust line right there. A few wrinkles here and there tell us that this is cloth, so it, you know, it's soft. 
And there you have Anastasia. Notice, notice that the, the eye which is on the far side of the nose, it's further away from my, my vision and the camera. So I have to actually draw the perspective of it being sort of wrapped around her head. So it changes its shape. It's not really the same shape as this eye that's closest to us. That goes for everything. If I were drawing the ear on the other side, I would draw an ear that feels like it's more far away from me than this ear. Now let's draw Dimitri. He's a strong character, so we're just gonna sit up a little straighter. I'm going to start with a circle for the skull, and I'm going to kind of imagine what he looks like uh, with strong angular lines. So I'm gonna divide the circle. I'm gonna divide it again horizontally. Then I'm gonna say his chin may be down here, a strong jaw line there. So you can see this is where the skull is, right there where the circle that we've drawn. Uh, nose, Dimitri, you could draw just a straight nose and most of the, most of the men that you see in animation you have the straight nose, but Dimitri has a kind of a little bump on his nose. It's like a hook nose, so he's not overly handsome. And he has kind of a grin, so I'm gonna put the mouth in here, a grin that is a little bit crooked. Here on the eye line, I'm gonna put, I've got the eye line a little high, so I'm going to just adjust it a little bit downward. And I'm gonna put his eyes here and over here. And I'm gonna have Dimitri kind of squinting. His eyes aren't quite as open as normally would be because it gives him a more mischievous look. Now Dimitri, to look strong, I think has to have a, a fairly strong brow, which means it needs to be thicker. And this can connect right with the nose. Now Dimitri has something else which I kind of like his hairdo. It's, it's sort of split down the center, so he parts his hair in the center and it falls to the side. There, this is falling to the side. There we go like that. He's probably always brushing his hair back. When you watch the movie, you'll see him continually fussing with his hair. Now right in here, it's on the eye line, we draw the ears. Now whether you're gonna see the ears or not, I wanna know where they're gonna be. So I draw the ears in right where they're gonna be. I'm gonna change the jawline because I think it feels better. So I'm kind of making decisions as I go. If, I'm, if I've drawn a line in the wrong place, I wanna change it, then I go ahead and change it. Don't feel that you have to commit yourself. So let's say this hair hangs down over this ear and it hangs down like this. Part of the ear is showing and maybe part of the hair like this is going on down there and we only see part of the ear. That's okay. That's okay. I've seen that kind of thing before and it works great. To make him look strong, he needs a nice strong neck. So I'm going to put his shoulders here. I'm going to put the shoulder like this. And he has the, the shirt that he wears. I'm trying not to draw too many round shapes because round shapes indicate softness instead of strength. So I'm drawing a lot of angular shapes. This is a little round over here. So I'd rather do this, a straight, a straight line. The straight lines are so much better for defining strength. All right, now he wears also a little tunic. So I'm gonna bring the tunic. It's like a little vest, bring it down here. And then somebody thought of a really good idea for Dimitri so that we make him look like he's strong. Why don't we show his muscles? So we rolled up his sleeves well above the muscle or his arm. So notice on Dimitri, he has the sleeve rolled up. You can do that by just drawing some little creases of the cloth up there and here's the bicep. Same thing over on this side. I want the shoulder bigger, but I want this rolled up sleeve to really show. And under the arms, he'll also need to have some kind of a crease of the cloth to show that the cloth gives just a little bit and a button right there. And maybe a button on his vest. And there you have your friend and mine, Dimitri. With Dimitri's eyes, I think you need to notice that as the far eye that goes around there has a little different shape than this eye that's closest to the camera. Notice also that um, it's more squinted. I, in some cases, like symmetry. In other cases, I think it makes a boring drawing. 
So notice the shape of this little eye here, besides being further away, it's a different shape than this. Notice that the grin goes to one side and not both sides. Notice that the hair on this side is one shape and this is another feeling over here. So you, you kind of want to get away from twinning things or making them the same shapes. Um, with his nose, if I didn't tell you before, we tried to make him just a little bit unflattering so that he would feel like, you know, this little bump in his nose keeps him from being, you know, the perfect prince. Rasputin is the villain, but he's a mean guy. Let's see if we can capture him. Rasputin is a meanie, so when I draw this circle, I'm going to say, what am I going to place on the circle that will make him look really mean? I'm going to face him in the same direction. I'm going to divide the circle in two. Then I'm going to imagine Brown. that he's, I mean, hold the eyeball in there. So, so far, and I know he has really sharp, sharp cheekbones on either side. Pay attention to this. As you go around this circle, things change perspective. What is around here is actually going into a sphere or an oval right there because it's changing perspective. Now let's draw what would happen if this guy were sort of snarling, but his mouth goes up underneath there. And so I'm gonna have to draw this, this mouth that's grinning. I'm gonna put it underneath the nose just a little bit there. And then I'm gonna turn it down on the corners and bring it down here like this. And I, there's teeth that come out of here somehow. So let's see if we can just sketch in some kind of forms of teeth. And he has a, a big lip, I remember that. One of the things that makes a character look really mean and determined is to take the little eye and make them cross-eyed. And then I can take the brow here on him and bring it really down like, like so, so that he is frowning. Now he already looks a little meaner. You see he's sort of angry-like. These, these eye brows that he had, the details of them were they had unruly hair sticking out of them that usually most older folks will recognize. All right, now the teeth. Let's pay attention to the teeth just a little bit. I would imagine, and we did this on purpose, that Rasputin's teeth, since they were rotting, were probably not all the same shape, so I like to make them different sizes inside of his mouth. Same down here on the bottom. They're smaller on the bottom. You know how your own teeth are. But don't make them uniform. And maybe one of them's cut way off. So what you get is a guy who is not what you'd call a pretty boy. And there's Rasputin's mouth. And now notice this is like a snarl. Inside, the tongue. Shade inside the mouth so you can tell it's down inside there. There's the tongue. Then back in here, way deep down in the throat, it gives the drawing a nice look if it's way deep down All inside. Right. Now we're ready to draw that skin that, that helps define the side of the face. Where's the jaw? Jaw's gotta be over here somewhere, underneath there, down into the chin, which would be right here. But I remember I'm Rasputin. Let's put the ears on, which remember on the, the ears are on the eye line. So let's put the ears right here. I like to square them off, because again, it gives him a strong look. And it makes him kind of the, I don't know, it makes him kind of comedic to draw these ears. Notice that it has to change. This is almost just a square shape up there. This one we see a little more of the ear. Now I know what comes out of here because we can't draw this chin exactly. We have to put hair on him. He has a beard. So let's shade that in. And then the beard, we could have made a beard that goes out here like this, but it wouldn't define that sharp angular look. So on this side, where this was over here, just coming out of the ears, I'm going to draw the other side, the sideburns, shade that in, and then let this beard come down here like this. Now, now down at the bottom, I can bunch this out a little, and all of this will be the strong beard. Here's the interesting part to me now. As a villain, it's fun if I can take his shoulders. If I put his shoulders down here, he looks comedic. If I put his shoulders up here like this, he looks villainous. So by raising the shoulders and lowering the head, it makes him look, what, more evil? And then he, he wears kind of a tunic or a cloak. So let's just indicate that kind of thing. And let's get the hair to work. 
Rasputin has kind of a pointed little, and I add this to the circle, he has a little pointed back of the head or crown of the head. And right here on the center eye line, here's where instead of a widow's peak that goes like that, uh, we made it a little, a little what, passageway back in there. And this goes down to meet the hair on the ears. Okay, now, uh, here's something that will help too. Under around the eyes, this is a guy that has lost sleep thinking about all the evil things he'll do, so you can get dark circles around the eyes and probably some little flesh underneath the eyes. And he gets meaner and meaner the more you add those kind of things. Let's darken the hair. There we go. That's how you draw Rasputin. This, this is a finished drawing. We've just finished detailing a lot of things, but before you get to the details, construction to me is really important. And it is in the construction that you're kind of guessing how the drawing is going to marry onto the paper. If, it, if what you're drawing doesn't seem to be doing, you can change lines because you're not making a commitment yet. Maybe I could illustrate that by saying, I'd like to draw Rasputin's hand up here. And if I wanted to, I'd say, well, let's, let's shorthand it or not totally commit it by making a dark line. If I drew his hand and I said, I want to, I want to put one finger up, I want to put several fingers, four fingers down, I want to have the thumb gripping those. So I didn't really draw anything yet. I just sort of doodled something in there to say, would that feel good? If it doesn't feel good to me and I say, no, I'd like to do something else, I have a really neat little eraser here that just takes it right out. Because I don't want to commit myself to that design. I think it's a bad one. But what if I said, I like something more like this. And this is just, again, not making a commitment, but there is a hand. Here's a thumb. Now I say, he's got an open hand. And I say, I think I like that idea better, but I haven't committed to it. Let's say I do commit to it. And I said, okay, draw that. So then what I would do, I'm gonna smudge this mic careful. A lot of times I get a piece of paper and lay it over there so I don't smudge it. But I would then begin to say, I know he has big knuckles and I'm still not committing entirely. I'm kind of sketching lightly. I call it shorthanding. And as you shorthand, you will become convinced that you're on the right track or you'll be sure that you're on the wrong track and then you can just take it all out. Now, I know he has things like warts and stuff, you know, I can put on one. I know he has these huge big nails. But I say, you know what, I like that. I think it's gonna work, I'm gonna go for it. So if I go for it, at this point, I'm gonna start increasing the density of the line, meaning the darkness of the line. And I'm going to start putting in details. Here's wrinkles on this. I'm, I'm making a commitment to this because now the paper, this is very dark on the paper. If I want to take it off, the paper is just ruined. So I believe in what I'm doing enough to darken this and to detail it. You don't want to put detail on a drawing if you know that you don't totally believe in it yet. But I'm liking where this is going. So I'm getting bolder and bolder about how I, you know, how I detail this. Pinch the skin. I'm now going to say, hey, this guy's got horrible, horrible skin, probably warts all over it. Some down here, probably some in here. And it makes a bigger statement about who he is. Do you see now he's yelling and he's doing it with his hand. The problem I have with this is I have two drawings on this paper right now. I have a drawing that's big of a hand and I have a drawing that's big of the head. When it comes to coloring this drawing, I've got to decide whether I want the audience to look at this hand or this head. And I can accomplish that by shading. Um, if I wanted to, I could take it and I could say, I could shade all of this in some fashion. I'll show you this. So everything is kind of out of the light, except
except where the eyes are. And you as the viewer, your focus will go right there because everything else is played down. There you have it. Bartok is the comic of the movie. He's a lot of fun to draw. Bartok is the character I love drawing most. And oddly enough, we start with the same circle that I've always liked to start with. And I'm going to tilt the head in a different way. There's the vertical division of the circle, the horizontal division of the circle. Here's Bartok's nose. And it's a flat little nose like a pig. So I'm just going to play like it's a pig's nose for a second. Now he has quite big eyes. So I'm going to just play like the eyes are close together and they're big. And this is, this is basically the character of this little bat. If you get the nose and the eyes working, you're in pretty good shape. Now I want to know, I'm going to draw the whole body of this bat, so I want to know exactly what he's doing. So I think what I'll do is say he's got a little, tiny little neck that you don't even get to see. And let's say that his arms are outstretched like this. So let's just shorthand this. And he has one foot up in the air like he's going to walk. So that gives you kind of an idea without, you know, committing yourself too much. And he has huge ears. Did I say that? Ears, big ears. So let's draw those big ears. One of them is just, just on top of this eye. The other one has got to be over here somewhere by the other eye. So it's drawn way over there. And then the inside of the ear, this is the inside. We have to start on the eye line right here, come up in here, and this represents outside the ear. This represents, and this is inner ear. So as I can differentiate, I'm going to shade what's inside and smudge it a little with my finger. This is a wonderful pencil. It's called a 2B pencil, and it smudges easily. Now you can see the inside. Now, what if Bartok is, we'll say, uh, a bit frightened? If he's frightened, I'm going to draw little eyes right in the center. I'm going to make him towards cross-eyed. And I'm also going to draw some brows that are very much like Rasputin's brows. So let's finish off this, this little nose. It's got a heart-shaped nose. See the heart? And some little fleshy folds right just above it. And then let's say that he is going, ah! So I'm going to drop this this jaw clear down there like this with his little teeth, which are very much like his master's teeth. And it's stretching the skin. See, it stretched the skin as he pulls his head down there. You can almost see this above his head. 